Hello. Expectations. Are expectations ever a good idea? I realized this week that I had some expectations about how my daughter should take care of her bicycle. I was driving home from work in the rain and I remembered that my daughter had left her bicycle out in the rain for the last five days and I wondered if she had brought it home that day. When I got back home, my daughter wasn't there. She was out with friends, but the bike wasn't in the garage. I knew where it would be, so I stomped off angrily and impatiently to get the bike back. When I found it in the rain, I looked at it and I imagined the rain was probably soaking into the pedals and causing corrosion. It's probably affecting the gears and making them squeaky. And I was really angry. You know, I expected my daughter to take care of her bike in a different way. I expected my daughter to know that leaving her bike out in winter weather for five days wasn't good for the bike. And I expected her to do something about it. I didn't expect that I had to go and collect it and bring it back. And I was telling myself that I had to go and collect it. Of course, it kind of slipped in there. I chose to go and collect it, but I was in this angry space. So I wasn't really aware of what was a choice and what wasn't. And luckily, when I came back home, my daughter still wasn't back because that gave me a bit of time to settle into a quiet space and find out what was going underneath. So I started writing a blog about expectations. And during that writing, I decided I'd write an email to my daughter rather than uh, having a conversation with her later on that evening. And you'll find that email if you go and search for the blog. So I discovered in that quiet space that I was wanting my daughter to change her behavior, take care of her bike in a different way so that I would be happy. She would then fulfill my expectations and I could love her and tell her she's a great girl and perfect daughter. And then I realized how unfair that all is. I have to set up these expectations and these plans or these preferences. And if people don't meet them, then I get upset or angry. I can think of some consequences. For example, I was thinking of, you know, if the rain had started some corrosion and there were some parts of the bike that had to be replaced in, you know, of course that money would come out of her pocket money to, to buy for those parts to replace. So I can think of lots of sensible adult parental things to do and could probably get lots of other parents to agree about making this into a learning lesson for your daughter. But there was something more important for me. I expected myself to rise above the situation to go, if you like, a little bit deeper in to see what's beneath there, to see what choice I was making. I was making a choice to be upset if other people didn't fulfill my expectations. And when you think about that, it's a crazy thing to do, to make expectations and then kind of know in the background when you're making them that if someone doesn't really fulfill your expectations, you're gonna get really pissed off and annoyed and you're gonna get consequences in place and you're really going to try and manipulate them in any way possible through anger or guilt to fulfill your expectations. I mean, how crazy is that? But I'm not expecting you to drop all your expectations and preferences and go through life uh, not affected by anything. What I am asking you to do is be aware of when you have negative reactions, when people don't fulfill your expectations and choose to see the situation in a different way. I like you to expect yourself to see that you're making a choice in that moment to make your feelings depend on the behavior of the other person. And you can make another choice. You can choose to be happy and loving to yourself and to the other person, regardless of what they do. I want my daughter to have the message that she's lovable because she's a loving person. No matter what she does, if she brings her bike home from school and polishes it every day and cleans it, or if she leaves it out in the rain for five days, she's equally lovable. I'm not going to change how I treat her because of what she does. That sounds may be hard to do as well, but why not expect ourselves to rise to that level of choice and taking responsibility for what's going on underneath, taking responsibility for our feelings and making another choice. And then when we get really aware of choice, we 
Even in that moment where we're angry and annoyed, we can realize what choices we make, or we can take a moment of quiet like I did as soon as you can afterwards before you interact with the person. All that requires a degree of practice, a degree of awareness, and that's where the Miracle Choice game comes in. It helps you to practice in a very supportive, helpful, caring environment to look at your choices you're making. And in the game, you have an experience that you can be in charge of how you feel, that you can take back that power you give away, that you have an inner awareness that will let you to be free in any moment and you don't have to change the circumstances and people around you so that you're free and happy. You're happy and free, independent of the behavior of other people. And that's a wonderful place to be and that's a wonderful experience to have. So I invite you to have that experience. Come play the Miracle Choice Game. Have a look at the website, miraclechoicegame.com and get to know more about the game. Thank you.